Am I audible today? Thank you. Let us start in a minute. Okay, let's start it. Then people come, they will join. So, hello everyone. Welcome to this gate and PTL lecture course. So, today we are going to discuss polarization in electromagnetic waves. This concept is very much have weightage in gate examination. For example, in gate 2019, there are two questions from this concept, and one in gate 2018. Then gate 2015 and gate 2013. So we are going to discuss these questions in today's lecture. In the first question, we have to find what is the direction, uh, what is the electric field wave that is coming. For example, the electric field of an electromagnetic wave is given to us. And what is the resultant wave after the combination of these fields? Similarly, in the in questions, we have given a combination of polarizations and we have to find what is the resultant intensity after this combination of polarizations. And in third questions, the light in this question, the electric field is passes through quarter wave plate. There is this element. We will learn about this. And uh, what will be the light after passing through this quarter wave plate? So these are the type of questions that we will going to face in gate exam. So let us start it with this electromagnetic wave concept. So the what is wave? It is a continuous disturbance in a medium which propagates in fixed shape and const at constant velocity. For example, if you took, take a string and you just take it up and down, it will start, there will some disturbance created by you and it will start away, moving away from you. And this kind of disturbance, which is moving in a string, is known as waves. So mathematically, it is a solution of this wave equations. So this is the wave equation. And the disturbance that you have created, this disturbance is the solution of this wave equation. So generally, the solution of this wave equation has the form at function f is equal to z minus vt, meaning it has to be linear in z and t. 
So if this is the kind of form that we see, then we can say that it is a wave and it satisfies this equation. Then we can say that the F represents a wave. And since it is given by Z minus Vt, so if you look at at time t equals to zero, if our function is sum at z equals to z1, and at time t equals to t1, the function is at z equals to vt1. That is means it is moving in positive direction of z. So we call this kind of wave as a forward moving waves. Similarly, there will also be a solution that satisfies the same wave equation, which is given by z plus vt. In that case, if at time equals to t0, the power wave is at z equals to z1, then at time t equals to t1, the, z, the wave at z equals to minus vt1. That is, it is moving at in this direction. So z equals to minus vt1. So this kind of wave is known as backward propagating wave. And they, uh, these are both the solution of this wave equation. Since both positive value of v and negative value of v will satisfy these equations. So even the linear combination of this form, like z minus vt and z plus vt, they are also form a wave. So, but generally, if you have seen in your classwork before, the wave is represented in the form of some like e equals to e naught cosine of k z minus omega t. This form from where this form came, this form is came from Fourier series. It says that. If we have any periodic functions, then we can always write it in the form of cosines and sine. So if you look at your function, it seems like it is a periodic function, which is moving with some period. Like after this period, it will come here and it is repeating. So if you take this one as a whole, as a function, then we can always write it in sine and cosine form. So if we just talk about just one, simple uh, like if we have just one simple lump then we can always write a one of these and if there are combination of these then there will be a summation term so we're just talking about one packet here and we just see how it will propagate based on that we will say that the wave is propagating in this direction or something like that so instead of dealing with all the combination of these waves we are just deal with or single lamp here. So our functions is basically is of this form. Function f equals to a cos kz minus vt, or we can all multiply k inside kvt. So if we write kv as omega, then it will become kz minus omega t. And a is the amplitude. Here in electric form, we can say that is the amplitude of electric field. And delta is the phase, it will just introduce for example, if your wave at z equals to zero has some kind of value, it is not zero. So in that case, you can always calculate what is the initial phase of your wave. But generally, when we solve questions, then this initial wave is not of that much importance. It is just the phase difference between two uh, two positions, like at z1, at z2, the phase difference that it is really matter. The initial phase does not matter most of the cases. So in one of the property of this electromagnetic wave is that it is transverse in nature. Meaning if you take a string and you just take up and down, then the displacement that is introduced in it, it is in the perpendicular to this moving direction. For example, in your wave is moving in Z direction but your displacement is in the perpendicular direction. So X is perpendicular to, to Z. So that means that your displacement is perpendicular to your propagation direction. If your wave has this kind of form, then this is known as transverse wave. There is also a kind of wave which is known as longitudinal, which is found in case of like spring. If you take a spring and you just stretch it, then the displacement created is in the same direction in which the, it is propagated. So this kind of wave are known as longitudinal wave, but we are not dealing with the longitudinal wave here. We are only talking about transverse wave because electromagnetic waves are transverse in nature and the light is also the electromagnetic wave. So basically light is just the high intensity 
of this light is directly proportional to amplitude mod e square so whenever we talk about the light we are generally talk about the electric fields so there are two perpendicular direction that are possible for the case of propagation for example if your light is propagating in z direction there are two other directions as well x and y that are possible which will be perpendicular so our wave can be have it can move in x direction it could also move in y direction or and for if you take this xy plane as some sort of sheet then z is also perpendicular to the xy plane whole so our wave can also be perpendicular to any other point in this xy plane so the direction in which the light is moving it can be xy or any point in xy if our wave is propagating in z direction so the perpendicular directions will have different different form different direction point so generally instead of saying that we are moving in x cap direction y cap direction we generally say it is moving in n cap direction and that n cap could be perpendicular to any plane point in this plane which is perpendicular to this propagating direction and this s cap is known as the vibration direction or the polarization direction of our wave and the plane that is being created by this propagation direction z and the vibration direction y this is known as vibration plane this is also known as polarization plane as well so our electric field has component which is e not is amplitude cos kz minus omega t this will tell you what is the propagation direction and the direction s cap which will tell you the polarization direction so whenever you see uh, electric field is written something like this form you can just analyze what is the propagation direction what is the polarization direction and what's the amplitude of wave so one of the property that i have told you is the transverse nature which says that the polarization direction always going to be perpendicular to your propagating direction that means their dot product always going to be zero this is an important property that is generally used when we solve the gate problem so if we can also write this n cap in terms of theta 1 for example if it make an angle theta with x direction we can write it as cos theta in s cap and sin theta in y cap and also instead of writing z cap we can write simple k cap direction that will tell you the k vector divided by mod of k so that will tell you the direction in which the any general direction in which wave is propagating propagating for example if you take this wave which is propagating in z there will be case that it will propagate at some angle with z in that case you cannot write n cap dot z cap you have to write this one form so this is most generalized form of this transverse nature of electromagnetic waves so how can we visualize it we can visualize it using for example a string example when we take a string and up and down it we can see that the wave is propagating in this string and for the case of linearly polarization direction the point that is in which the string is moving it is in x direction so if you take any point it will be moving in like this only in x direction positive x or negative direction so if our your point is moving in just one along one line then it is known as linearly polarized line that line could be along x it could be along y or it could be along at any angle so as long as your line your point the string is moving along a line it will be linearly polarized or plane polarized line because the it will make a plane with your propagating direction so there is also the case of circular polarization so if you take your string and you start rotating in at the circumference of circle then it and you start observing it by standing here like you are standing in front then what you see is the circular polarization of light because each point of your string is more than moving in circular path so here the electric field that we represent is in linear part and it is generally represented by e0 cos kz minus omega t in the n cap direction 
the direction in which the line in line is this is the direction along with this mm -hmm. your string is moving so and cat is this line direction but here in this case you have both component x component as well as y component so both these component will be form a circular polarization so your electric field here is the combination of x component cos kz minus omega t and y component sin kz minus omega t the important point here to note is that for a electric field to represent a circular polarization your electric field ex and ey they have to have a phase difference of pi by 2 so these two component is expected for example here it is e0 cos kz minus omega t and the y polarization has can be written as e0 cos kz minus omega t minus pi by 2 so if there is a phase difference of pi by 2 between ex component and ey component and their amplitude is also same in that case it will represent a circular polarization so the amplitude has to be same because to be a circle your radius has to be same in x and y direction so your ex component ey component will form a circular equation so we will solve the questions based on this concept of circular polarization i hope it is clear to you and what i mean by ex and ey component is your electric field is a linear combination of this ex and ey component so if ex component is this plus ey component is this if your amplitude is not same for example ex0 is not same as e by 0 then it, your circular polarization have different radius in x direction and y direction and that will lead to electrical polarization so even if the phase difference between two is pi by 2 but your amplitude is different it will be electrical polarization it will not be circular polarization and also if there is another phase like it is not neither zero nor pi by 2 but it is something as like pi by 3 or pi by 4 that case is also come inside this electrical polarization case so electrical polarization is more general and when phase for example if your electric field is given by a cos kz minus omega t and your ey is given by b cos kz minus phi minus phi if phi is zero that will lead to linear polarization and if phi is pi by 2 and a equals to b that will lead to circular polarization if phi is something else anything could be like zero or multiple of you know 2 pi or 4 pi so that cosine will not change or it will be multiple of pi by 2 then and it is something else like pi by 3 then it will be electrical polarization so electrical polarization so this is most general form of equation now come to this as i have told you if both are cosines that will lead to linear polarization for example if your electric field is such that is is given by e0 is cos kz minus omega t and e2 given by e1 is the ex component and e2 is the ey component so we can just write it it is given by cos kz minus omega t plus 2 pi so we already know that that if there is something cos 2 pi plus phi we can always write it as cos phi There is a positive sign, so the term is already e zero y and e x. So we have already e zero x and e zero y. So the real time electric field is a linear combination of e one and e two. So if we if we take this e zero x cos k z minus omega t in the x cap direction, e zero y cos k z minus omega t in the y cap direction, the phase phi will get changed by this identity. And now, if we use this identity, cos x plus y equals to cos x cos y minus plus sine x sine y. If we use that and we take this term out, the term in x cap actually I have changed my notation. I cap here is the same as x cap, and j cap here is same as y cap. 
sorry i have just changed my notation i have used i cap and j cap here so this will be e0 x cos k z minus omega t in the x cap but if you open this concept cos k z minus omega t plus 2 pi so again this term will become zero so they are just try to show this identity to you so the final electric field is e0 s in the i cap direction zero y in the j cap cos k z minus omega t so your final electric field has amplitude which is depend on this vector sum but your uh, cos k z minus omega t form this form is correspond to the linear polarization so if you take two component of electric field in x and y direction and both have cosine component then it will lead to linear polarization with the resultant amplitude given by this vector sum you can calculate it from here cos 2 pi is 1 and the resultant phase that it resultant angle that this linear polarization make with x and y axis is given by this tree tan inverse e0 y by e0 x for example let's consider a very simple case for example i have take this very simple case in which i take my e0 x as 1 volt per meter and e0 y s also 1 volt per meter in that case my electric field e which is given as e1 vector plus e2 vector so basically i have e0 x in the i x cap or i cap e0 y in the j cap and cos k z minus omega t so if you look at this e1 component this will represent the electric field in x direction so your electric field this is why this is there is in x direction and according to this e2 electric field is in y direction this is the resultant but if you take the combination of that then your electric field will be in z direction not in z it will make an angle which is given by phi which is tan inverse e0 y e0 1 is 1 that is 45 degree so your resultant electric field make an angle 45 degree if this is x and this is y it will make an angle 45 degree it is both x and y but it still is remain the linearly polarized light because it is moving in this direction so this is basically the concept what it means when we have different phase values now come to this another concept let's say how we can visualize circular polarizations in this case let's say i will start with this thing my electric field e1 is e0 cos k z minus omega t so in the x cap direction so i will take e0 as some number let's say 4 and e2 is given by again 4 because it is necessary condition that amplitude has to be same for circular but another term in y has to be for 90 degree phase difference in the y cap now how we visualize it our electric field e1 is in the x cap direction so this is x this is y and this is z so e1 is in the x cap direction e y is in the y cap direction this e2 component it is in y direction and the resultant component e vector is the combination of that and to visualize it what we do is we uh, start with let's say at z equals to 0 how the electric field e1 is 4 cos omega t and the electric field e2 is minus 4 sin omega t i have just put z equals to 0 here so this is my electric field look like now if time t is equals to omega t is equals to 0 electric field e1 has amplitude 4 and e2 has 0 so at time t equals to 0 my electric field is in x direction 
resultant E, which is E1 plus E2. So this is an X cap or this is an Y cap. So my resultant field at T equals to zero, it will be is an four in the X cap direction. So this is my resultant. Now if my omega t is equals to zero, if I increase my omega t to pi by two, let's say time get increased, how the field will evolve? Omega t will become pi by two, this term will become zero, and our field will become minus k four in y cap. So if this is my y, this is z. So then my field go to minus four in minus y cap. So with time my field get evolved and it move from plus four to minus four. And if I completely draw it, then it will become a circle. And it is like clockwise direction. So this is how we find how the electric field is evolving in different cases. So we will start with solving questions based on gate examination. And then we will see different concepts here. If you have any doubt, you can ask. Is everything clear till here? Yes, ma'am. Ma'am, can you explain uh, circular polarization? In case of circular polarizations, there are two conditions that has to be satisfied. One is that amplitude has to be same both x and y component. See, if for the circular polarizations to exist, let's start with this basic. The circular polarization will have both component x and y. Only then it will make a complete circle. And the component x and y has to have the amplitude which is equal. If ex component has E0, then EY also has to be E0. Otherwise, your radius in X will become different from Y and it will become more of a elliptical shape. So your EX and EY has to have same amplitude. And second condition is that the phase between X and Y, it has to be pi by 2. That is, if our EX is A0 cos, Z minus omega t, then our EY should be A0 cos Z minus omega t minus pi by 2, or which can also be written as A0 sin Z minus omega t. So EX and EY are supposed to have a phase difference of pi by 2, only then the circular polarization exists. And the best way to visualize this circular polarization is we put the z equals to 0 in our equation. We put z equals to 0 and we see how with time the things will evolve. Then i equals to 0. I have taken omega t completely. It makes it easier. Otherwise, you have to deal with omega, which generally not given just to see the visualization. Because if time increases, omega t increases obviously. So with omega t equals to zero, we have electric field component, and which is only one component exists, cosine component. And with omega t equals to pi by two, only sine component. So by just by so only just by checking at two position, omega t equals to zero and omega t equals to pi by two, we see that our electric field at omega t is in x cap direction. You can draw an arrow in x cap. And it has a amplitude 4. So the arrow is according to this. At omega t equals to pi by 2, the electric field is in. This component will become 0. And only this component survives. Minus 4. So if you can draw again an arrow with minus 4. And you can see with time t equals to 0 to t equals to pi by 2. This is how your field moves. So by just extrapolating it further, we can say that the field is moving in clockwise direction. So this is how we see the circular polarization. So is it clear? Yes, ma'am. OK, now we start with solving the questions. There is this question in gate 2019, question number 14. 
the electric field of an electromagnetic wave is given by 3 sin kz minus omega t in x cap plus 4 cos kz minus omega t in y cap. Now we have two components here. One is the ex, which is the x cap component. Another one is ey, which is in y cap dimension. Now the wave is, we have to answer whether the wave is a linearly polarized, elliptically polarized, or with some angle. If it is linearly polarized, what is the angle? And if it is elliptically polarized, is whether it is moving clockwise direction or it is in a counterclockwise direction. So we will solve the problem exactly the same way as we did for the circular polarization. So we are given in electric field with three sine kx minus omega t and cos kz minus omega t. Now you see the ex and ey component, they have a phase difference of pi by two. One component is cosine, another is sine. So there will be no chance that it will be linearly polarized. For a linear polarization, phase should not be a multiple of pi by two. Either it will be zero or a multiple of pi. So it is not a linear polarization because for zero and one pi case, in that case, their both component are cosine. So for linear polarization, both component has to be cosine. Circular polarization, amplitude has to be same. So amplitude is different. So it is also not a circular polarization. Now we have elliptical polarization, but there are two cases possible. Either it move in counterclockwise or clockwise directions. Now to check this, we just put z equals to zero in this, and we are left with ex component, which is minus three sine omega t, and ey component four cos omega t. Now we check with at omega t equals to zero, what is the condition? At omega t, ex is zero, only ey is equals to 4. So at omega t, we have this component ey survive. As the time increases, omega t become pi by 2, ex will become minus 3, and ey will become 0. That is, it is moving in this direction, and it is to minus 3 with time. So with time, it is moving in this direction. So if you look at this direction, this is counterclockwise direction. So the right answer is D. It is an electrically polarized light in counterclockwise direction when seen towards the traveling towards the observer. If uh, you are standing, you know, minus shared direction, which is away from the observer, then you are just like you are looking at this clock from behind and you see opposite direction. So you will need to take care of the question in the question where it is asked towards the observer or away from the observer. So basically, generally, when they say towards the observer, that we will talk about positive their direction. And when we talk about away from the observer, that is talk about negative their direction. So in question, this part is also take care. I hope you will get it. Now, next question is again in gate 2019. So in a set of n successive polarizer, the mx polarizer make an angle m pi by 2n with the vertical. So we have given that we have n successive polarizer. Means we have one polarizer, then we have another polarizer, we another polarizer. And the mx polarizer, if we are talking about, it will make an angle m pi by 2n with respect to initial light waves. If it is like vertical polarized light is incident onto this first polarizer. For example, if we talk about the third polarizer, so it will make an angle 3 pi by 2 n with respect to the initial incident light. A vertically polarized light beam of intensity I naught is incident on two such sets. We have two sets similar like this one, we have another one set here. So we have two sets of polarizer and they are both num differ in case of numbers. So one have number n1, another one n2, n2 is greater than n1. That means second set have more number of polarizer compared to the first set. Now let the intensity of light being coming out of the first, after first case is in one, after second case is in two. So with this collection of polarization, we have passover light 
and the intensity is i n one after first case, and after second case it is i n two. We have to find which of the option is correct. I n two is greater than i n one. The polarization is vertical, or i n two is less than i n one. Polarization is vertical, or it is horizontal. Means which one intensity is less? Since it is a case of polarization, polarizer. So we are going to use Mahler's law. We say that the light, if we have two polarization, two two polarizer, and it makes an angle theta with respect to one another. In that case, the polar in that case the intensity passes through after this polarization. Jason, after this polarizer. Bundle will be I not cos square theta t. Actually, if you have a one polarizer and you have linearly polarized light, it is same as having two polarizer combination and unpolarized light. Because after passing through one polarizer, it will make a linearly polarized light, and the concept will become like this. So we are going to use this equation I cos I not cos square theta. And they are making an angle theta m, which is m pi by two n. So if you look, apply this formula after n polarizer, then for example, after first polarizer, it will be I not cos square theta, and after second polarizer, it will be cos square theta multiplied by this from again. So you will have you know. Cos square theta, and then power two n, like this concept. I will show you later. Now, first answer this question: What is the polarizer polarization of the final light after coming through this combination? Now, if you look at this Mahler's law, it says that final light will be I square cos theta, and theta will be M pi by two n. In case of first polarization, in case of first, in first case where we have n equals to n one, after whole polarization, this thing m will become n one because m means m at polarizer. So after coming passing through all the polarizer, m is become n one. In that case, theta will become these two quantity will become equal. And theta will become pi by two. So even in the case when m is n one, or in the case when m is n two, theta will be pi by two. That means intensity will become zero. So if we have vertical light, then the output light is horizontal. That is, it will not going to pass through it. Only that intensity will be zero. So our final output will be horizontal light. Now we have to see whether i n Pass through the second is larger than the first, or the intensity pass through the first is larger than the second. For this, we just take a very simple case. Let's fix our m. I have just suggested a hit and try method here. Just fix our m to one. Then our intensity will become I not cos in its m pi by two by n one. I have used m equals to one here. And the intensity is the multiplication of all these terms. Now we are given that n two is greater than n one. So let us consider the case n two is equal to two times of n one. So if I take n one to be one, then n two to be two. So the intensity i one will become i not cos pi by two since n one is one. So i one will become zero in that case, and i two will become cos. Here, cos pi by two pi two square two multiply by n two n two I have taken two, so it is four. So intensity I two will become I not by two square or point two five times of I no. So the in this case, if I take n is equals to one and this condition, then my intensity I two will become one. Now let us consider that n one is two and n two is four. Since I have taken that n two is two n one, in that case intensity i one is zero point two five pi naught, and i two will become by the same formula point five c i naught. 
so in this case i2 is again comes to be i1 so if you try that case most of the time i2 is always going to be greater than i1 so your i2 is going to be greater than i1 and polarization is horizontal so this is the right answer so basically you have to fix the parameter one by one and in the formula you are given the two parameter for the theta and pi by 2n so first fix n change your n then you will be able to see how the trend is going with respect to the intensity in two cases and based on that you will find the right answer so okay let's move to the next concept i hope it is clear to you the question is coming in gate 2018 examination a quarter wave plate introduce a part distance of lambda by 2 between the two component of polarization parallel and perpendicular to the optic axis an electromagnetic wave is given a component s cap plus y cap e not if the power i k z minus omega t is incident normally on a quarter wave plate which has its optic axis making an angle 135 degree with the x axis the emergent electromagnetic wave would be elliptically polarized circularly polarized linearly polarized with polarization as incident wave or linearly polarized with polarization at 90 degree to the incident wave so what we are given is we are given an electromagnetic wave which is basically ex and ey component is given to us and it is incident normally to quarter wave plate so basically what quarter wave plate is is kind of bifringent material and what it does is it changes the and phase difference between the two component of electric field so if you have incident combination of ex and ey and you pass it with quarter wave plate then it will introduce a phase difference in either in x or in y with a phase difference phi of pi by 2 i'll show you from where pi by 2 came but quarter wave plate introduce the phase difference of pi by 2 in either in x or in y so between ex and ey the phase difference is get increases now it is says that it is the optic axis of this quarter wave plate which make an angle 135 degree so first what we have to do is we have to see the quarter wave plate is given according to their part difference it is given that it gives the part difference of lambda by 2 4 and therefore phase difference which is given by 2 pi by lambda multiplied by part difference so if you do this 2 pi by lambda multiplied by part difference which is lambda by 4 it will give you pi by 2 so the phase difference that is introduced by quarter wave plate is pi by 2 next what you have to do is you have incident electric field you have to break it in component along the optic axis and perpendicular to the optic axis because the phase difference is introduces as per the axis of this optic axis so initially my electric field is given by this form we can write in the more real component which we are familiar with so we can write e0x which is the es component as e0 For example, here I can also write it like e zero i k z minus omega t in the x cap plus e zero i k z minus omega t in the y cap. So this term is the power i k z minus omega t, the complex form, and real form can be written like this. So e x component is e zero cos k z minus omega t, and e y component is this. So if you look at your amplitude is same cosine and cosine both ex and ey so that means in initial polarization of incident wave is linear polarization so after passing through quarter wave plate first thing happen is es component break into two component so one is along the optic axis and one is perpendicular to the optic axis so the one along the cop of this axis is e0 x cos 45 cos 135 and perpendicular to that is e0 y 
Ma'am, what is E zero Y? Sign one thirty five. E zero Y? Yeah. Actually, they are same. E zero X is E zero. It is given in question. E zero Y is E zero. They are both same. Next, in question it is given. So I just write it more general form. So they are E zero X and E zero Y. They are the X and Y component. Okay, sorry. E zero X. Actually, I haven't taught you this thing. Can I explain you again? Ma'am, where is the sign Mostly from? See, it is given to you in question that electric field is given by X cap plus Y cap E zero. E to the power i k z minus omega t, and this is the complex form. And you are aware that you can, if you have e to the power i some function i k s, you can write it. Cos plus i sin k x plus i sin k x. So this is real part. This is this can this same thing. So this is imaginary part. So just to either you can solve in this form. If you are comfortable with this, or you can transform into this linear form. Just to take only the real component and solve the equation. What will give you same answer? I have just taken the real component, so I just take E zero cos k z minus omega t. I just take it inside bracket, and that E zero x is the x component of that, and E zero y is the y component of that. Are you able to get it? How I transfer from yes. this to this? Okay. So this is the linear polarization. I just take it so that it will simplify my problem. Otherwise, you can solve in this complex form. That is also fine. Okay. Okay. So after after passing through the quarter wave plate, my electric field is zero x. Will become E zero x cos one thirty five since it quarter wave plate optic axis make an angle one thirty five with the x direction and therefore perpend it make an angle forty five. This is y. This is x. If it make an angle one thirty five with x, then it will make an angle one thirty five plus ninety with y. So my E zero x component will become E zero x cos one thirty five. And since it is a quarter wave plate, it's not simple polarizer, so it will also introduce a phase of ninety degree. So you can either add the phase or you can subtract the phase. Both are equally considered. Just your answer might get differ, but both are correct. So in quarter wave plate, you have to introduce a phase of pi by two. So your E zero x component after passing through quarter wave plate. Will become cos e zero x this term multiplied by cosine since it's a cosine component plus extra phase this is introduced by quarter wave plate. So I started with this. Just forgot about this for the moment. So you are left with e zero x cos one thirty five plus ninety degree. So you can also write is minus e zero x sine one thirty five. You are aware with this identity. Cos theta plus ninety is minus sine theta. So this e zero x one thirty five is then become minus e zero x five root two. Similarly, if you look at the e zero y component after passing through this quarter wave plate, nothing will change except that this component will get the sine of one thirty five. See the phase difference that I have to introduce due to quarter wave plate. I have introduced in one just component in E X, so I just take E zero Y as it will not introduce anything in Y. So you can either introduce ninety degree in X component or in Y component. So whatever your suitability. Basically, 
the the phase difference between ex and ey has to be 90 so this phase difference so i have introduced in ex so i have introduced ey zero so this phase difference remain 90 degree so e0 y component has only the sine component in it and this is my e0 y after passing to quarter wave play so if you look at the e0 x test it is become minus e0 x by root 2 and e0 y test it will become e0 y by root 2 now if you look at e0 x e0 y they are just multiply by this term so my final electric field in x direction will become e0 by root 2 means yeah, there is a multiplication will came due to this quarter wave plate and a negative sign so since there is a negative sign that will means the phase that is introduced which is given by tan inverse y at component which is e0 y by root 2 and x component minus of that so it will become tan in minus of tan inverse 45 degree e0 x and e0 y amplitude is same so i just cancel out both these two terms and that will give you phase difference of oh minus of 1 and that will give you phase difference of minus 45 so initially the light is in 45 now after passing through quarter wave plate is in minus 45 so the light will remain linearly polarized but uh, angle either is 180 degree change or it is in the same direction in my case it is came to be negative that is it is moving 180 degree with respect to initial but if you use negative sign concept then you will get this positive term and you will get that your light will move in the same direction so if you look at the option the option is given for linear polarization there is no option for 180 degree there is option for 90 degree and in the same direction so the only same direction is correct if there is an option with 180 degree that is also correct do you have any doubt in this question no ma'am Ma'am, uh, that one concept is there about optic axis. So yes, you mean to say that we have to take the component in the direction of optic axis itself, right, ma'am? Yes, because the quarter wave plate. Yes, because the quarter wave plate. What is does is, if you have a quarter wave plate, and it has an optic axis direction. and when mm -hmm. you incident an electric field onto it it will introduce the phase difference along this optic axis direction so you mm -hmm. have to take your component along that direction only then you can introduce a phase of 90 if your component is not that direction the phase will not be 90 it will be something else okay okay ma'am okay so let's move to next question This came in gate twenty fifty question number fifty. So a plane wave is given exactly the same form as the previous question, and after passing through an optical element, it will came out in this form. So what is the that optical element is? So this is my incident wave. This is my output wave, and there is some element that is placed in between them. So what is that element is? so if you look at the ex component i have again simplified it in cosine form so this is my x component and this is my y component similarly in output this is my x but y component has negative so e by my become minus of e0 which can i which i also write this like cosine of pi as you are aware with this cos pi plus theta equals to minus cos theta so with minus that means the phase difference between ex component ey component it is zero initially if this is phi 1 this is phi 2 then the phase phi 2 minus phi 1 is zero but here if you look at the phase this phase is phi 1 that 
dash and this is phi two dash or like this is phi two dash. Then if you take the phi dash, it will be phi two dash minus phi one and this is phi. This means the optical element is such that it introduces a phase of phi. And if which we from which we can calculate what is the part difference that is introduced by this element by using phase equals to two pi by lambda into part difference and part difference turns out to be lambda by two. That means it is a half wave plate. So if you plate place a half wave plate between an incident wave and between an incident and output wave, it will introduce a phase difference of pi by two in any one of the cup. By, not pi by two, pi in any one of the components. So here it introduces a phase difference of pi in y component. So it's a half wave. Plate. Now this one is come in gate 2013. It's an easy question. A circularly polarized monochromatic plane wave is sent on a dielectric interface at blue stress angle. Which one of the following statement is correct? So, uh, reflected light is plane polarized light in a plane perpendicular to the incident and transmit is circularly polarized light. Well, as you are aware with this concept of distress angle, if this is my interface between two medium, with respective index N1, N2, and this is normal to that medium, and it's make an angle theta, this is an incident light, this is normal, and if my incident light, I make an angle theta with the normal. And if it is unpolarized, it has component in all direction. Then the light that is reflected is plane polarized light with only component which are perpendicular to this plane of incident, that is out of plane. And the light which is transmitted, it will contain both perpendicular as well as the planar component. So it is basically mixture of both components. So the reflected light always going to be plane polarized light, but with component perpendicular to the plane of incidence. And if we have a circular polarization, again reflected light will have plane polarized perpendicular component, but in case of transmitted, it is a circular polarization as well as the linear polarization. And combination of circular circular plus linear will lead to elliptical polarization. So the light that is transmitted, it will be elliptically polarized. So this option is correct. The reflected light is plane polarized and the transmitted is elliptically polarized light. So these are the questions that is came in past few years on this concept of polarization. So if you have any doubt, you can ask. Or is it clear? Ma'am, um, the examples were actually good and uh, these examples are very clear. But one uh, probably out of the way concept I'm asking, it is about the optic axis. I have already been confused okay. always. What is the understanding of optic axis now? Okay, so this yes, thing, uh, I'll explain you. And uh, you are familiar with this concept of, of polarizer. Yes, yes ma'am. Polarizer also have a, its own axis. And mm -hmm. based on that it will, if you have incident light, it, if it is unpolarized light, it will pass only the component which is aligned this direction. And mm -hmm. we say that, mm -hmm. that our light will get linearly polarized. Similarly, mm. if you have a quarter wave plate, it has its own optic axis. Mm. Okay. So what the main function of quarter wave plate is, it will introduce not quarter wave plate, whatever the wave plate you are talking about. As long as mm. it is a wave plate, it will introduce a phase difference between two component of electric field. So if mm. you have electric field EX or EY, so it will introduce a phase difference between EX and EY. And the phase yeah. difference that is introduced by them is depend upon the optic axis. The component which is aligned along the optic axis, it will get a phase difference. Like if it EX is my component which is aligned this optic axis, then EX will get a 
phase difference of 90 degree but ey would not get that difference it will pass as it is so basically the phase difference between two component is 90 but one get ahead of another one okay. similarly there might be chance that ey it will give a phase difference of 90 to y degree y component and ex will pass as it is so that will depend upon what is the direction means if this concept is given fast axis or slow axis mm. so optic axis has two parts it has fast axis or slow axis fast axis means the component which align along the fast axis will get a lead means it will get 90 degree angle but for the case of slow axis that means it will lag by this 90 degrees so this concept is not coming till now in gate examination so i haven't taught this fast and slow so th basically we are trying to align our component along the direction of optic axis so that we can introduce a phase of 90 or whatever because we know that if we are talking about quarter wave plate we want to introduce 90 degree but if our axis is not aligned we don't know whether it introduces a phase difference of 90 or some other value. Because if it is not aligned, it could be anything. Yes. Yeah. Okay. So only just to make the thing simpler, we align it, then we introduce phase, and then we realign in a letter. And even if all the problem of polarizations, we just basically try to align the axis of incident polarized light either with polarizer or with quarter wave plate optic axis so basically we just jump to that domain of optical element we solve our problem there and then we get back to our real domain so this is the kind of mindset we have when we try to solve this problem okay okay thank you ma'am Okay, so is there any other question? Okay, if not then we can finish today's class. Okay, thank you, thank you so much, ma'am. Uh, ma'am, uh, okay. uh, yes. can you have these notes? Actually, I will know? upload the video link today and on the video link there is this youtube link where we have to upload our video and i will send this notes on description box of this youtube link so you will get it after 6 pm okay so never okay. Okay, okay okay thank you Thank you, ma'am. And ma'am, uh, there are other uh, lectures uh, I, I could see on the NPTEL website. Some of them had the recording links, but many of them does not have any recording link or update, link, update links. So shall those be uh, also be updated on YouTube, ma'am? Yeah, you will get, uh, for example, on different days, you are you are talking about this live lecture, ma'am? On the on the NPTEL link, yes, ma'am. On the NPTEL link, when I when we open NPTEL Gate Physics, there there are yes. uh, the schedule is there. So many of the programs which have already been conducted, many of the classes which have already been conducted, for many of them there is the link. Link is available there, but many for most of the lectures the links are not available, uh, which has already been conducted. The links are not available on YouTube. So would those also be uploaded on YouTube, ma'am? Yes, uh, all videos are uploaded on YouTube. For example, in my case, all my videos are available on this public view. So you can see okay. all the previous video as well. So similarly, all other videos that are not uploaded till now, they are also available sometime later. Okay, okay. Okay, okay, ma'am. Okay, okay. Thank you. Okay, thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you, ma'am.